not uploaded in a while, but um, I just wanted to make a tutorial on how to render a rig in Cinema 4D that's like updated because nobody in the graphics community uses Cinema 4D anymore. <laughs> Everyone uses Blender, um, but I still use Cinema 4D, so it's probably going to be about the same as my last tutorial for it, but hopefully easier to understand and my voice won't be as annoying. So first thing you want to do is open Roblox Studio and just do a base plate. Now you want to get the load character plugin, which I'll link in the description. So once you have that installed, click it, type in the username, and then spawn R6, don't do R15. And usually I check spawn at origin too. Now you can either um, use the character that you already have basically, or you can make your own. To make your own, which a lot of people actually really don't know this, um, you can get the plugin called Load Catalog Items. I'll also link that in the description, and it can let you load literally anything from the catalog. Catalog, and if you just drag it onto your character, um, it'll snap on. So I'm just gonna delete some of these. Um, it can also do uh, clothing, like pants and shirts. But to do that, you have to delete the pants and shirt first. So now. You can go to Marketplace, uh, just grab literally whatever, I'm just gonna grab some random stuff. I'm not trying to make this- oh, okay. <laughs> I'm not trying to make this look good. Okay, once you have the thing you want, you copy this code in the link, just the numbers. Copy it, click the button and paste it here and press insert. And then you'll see it. It'll say function has ran check workspace. Now just go into this, open up the group, and drag the little thing that has the gorgeous hat icon into the group that your character is in, and it'll snap right on. So I'm just gonna do that with the rest of this. And with clothing, you insert it. You won't actually see it get inserted, but you'll see like you won't see it in the workspace, but you'll see the group. The same thing, drag that onto your character and it'll be there. Just make sure you delete the previous shirt and pants first because I'm pretty sure you can't see anything. Okay, there. Um, I personally like to delete the face of my character. This is obviously completely optional, you don't have to, but if you want to, you just open up the group that your character is in, open up the head group, and delete the decal that you have this. And you have this. Now that your character is ready, whether you made a custom one or just on somebody else's, click the group, right click, and click export selection. I have my own folder for it, and I recommend making your own, own folder, folder. And I also recommend making a separate folder for each thing that you export so that the textures don't get like mixed up and messed up and don't work properly. So I'll just make a new folder and call it a, call it a tutorial. It doesn't really matter what you name it. Okay. Now, by the way, you can do that with like any models from the free model thing. Um, like if you wanted a tree, you can right click this, export it, save it, blah blah blah. One thing I will give a disclaimer for, with models like this, um, if they have a basic Roblox texture, like, let me try to this one. Okay, like the material here, if it's a Roblox material, like one of these, it won't export that texture, so you're going to have to add your own. If it has a custom texture, it will, I'm pretty sure. But Roblox basic t textures, like smooth plastic, slate, ice, all that stuff, it, it will not ex export that. So you have to make your own. You want to open your Lightroom that I linked in the description. Just double click it and open it. I have R19, but this should work for all versions. Now you have this, it already has the rig in it, which is nice. 
Um, if you want to use a different Lightroom and don't have a rig, I will link one in the description. Um, if it's like, it'll be the Nero rig. So if you want to import that, you would go to Edit, Preferences. Hold on. Open Preferences folder. And then you want to go to Library Browser and just drag in the lib 4 email. And then I'm pretty sure you have to reopen it. But once you do, go to Content Browser, open Presets, and you'll have all your stuff here. I do that for like all of these separate rigs if I don't want to use the blocking package. Now, you want to go to this texture that says Change on it. Um, scroll down under the Color tab. Next to Texture, there's these three dots here. Click that. Go into the folder that you saved your OBJ in right here and then um, you might have multiple textures in your folder it kind of depends on what hats you have and if you have any models in this case it's just one texture but it, it completely depends um, but for the main texture you want to do the one that looks somewhat like this is laid out like this because it's just the full like body and clothing now go to file merge and then merge hold on <laughs> I gotta navigate the .obj, not the .mtl, .obj, open, change the scale to 100, and then everything is fine, everything else is fine, I mean, um, you can, I'm pretty sure if you untick invert transparency, that'll make things easier, yeah. Now drag it up to line up, go to handle, uh, handle 1, right here, because that's normally what this, actually, it can be any number, but it'll start with handle, is what the main texture will start with. So do that, go into color, go to these three dots, open that, and now go into basic and untick alpha and transparency. Now open the group that this is in and delete all of the things that start with the username of the character, because those are all just the body parts that we don't need. And now open the red group, open attachments, and all of these, um, actually the headphones are, okay. So you want to drag these into their respective attachment categories, so let's see, the hair, the hat, and the ears are all head attachments. These headphones, I'm going to make torso attachments. It could, actually, they could be head too, honestly. It, it, this one's kind of ambiguous, it depends on what you want. Now that those are in there, they're attached to your character, so they'll move when you move the character. Now to posing. You just want to click these green boxes and use the move or rotate rotate tool and they'll move the lips. So I'm just going to make a real quick pose here. Okay, my pose is done. One tip I have is go into the camera, make sure you're, you're in the object tab and take this focal length and change it down to like Mm, 12 to like 18. It depends. Now to see the camera's view, you want to click, it might be hard to see, but it's next to these two red dots, this little square thing. Click that and now you can see the camera's view. Once you change that vocal length, it'll zoom you out, but change that and then zoom in up here. And it just kind of changes like, it adds more motion, kind of. It changes that depth, like you can see here. Now that you have all that ready, you want to add an HDRI. To get an HDRI, you just want to go to polyhaven.com or anywhere that has free HDRIs, but I usually just get them from here. Um, scroll through and just pick one. Uh, I recommend one with like, just go for one that has colors that you kind of want your light to look like because it will affect that. Let's see. I'll just pick this one because it should make the light pretty warm, just to give an example. Download it. Um, it doesn't, I usually just do the basic 4K HDR. Uh, make sure it's HDR actually, but 4K, you can choose any of these, I would recommend 4K. Go in here, color this matte texture, and change the texture to whatever HDR you picked. And now you can come into the lights here and change the colors all you want, or you can just leave them as they are. I usually add a sunlight here, and then um, you can't 
if you see here when you try to change stuff it won't let you because it's based off of where the sun is positioned you can change that but you go into the sun tab and just move these to kind of move where the sun is and that will also change the intensity and the color of the light but if you want to be able to change it on your own you can untick this set light color button and it'll let you change things all right now that i've done that you want to go to this button with the gear icon up here go into save go into file and press these three dots and then make a folder where you're going to save your renders right here i'll name it tutorial uh, you can also sometimes when you render something there will be like noise like kind of lower quality noise on the shadowy parts and stuff if that happens you can go into anti-aliasing and then change the minimum level to like 4x4 or 8x8 it'll make the render time longer but it'll get rid of the noise so now you want to press this middle button here and it'll start rendering the image all right now that's rendered looks like there is noise right here but i'm not gonna fix that just because this is for tutorial purposes but now that you have that rendered that's it you have it you can like it should be transparent it looks lower quality with the black background and the render view but it's not actually like that there's Okay, see, it's actually transparent and the quality isn't as pixelated as it looks. But now you have your render done, you can import this into Photoshop, edit it, do whatever, whatever you want with it, um, and that's basically how you render in Cinema 40, a simple way. There's more, there's more things you can do in there, but this is a very basic way to render a Roblox character. So I hope that was helpful, and I hope it was more helpful than my last tutorial I had on this. Um, Thank you for watching, and just comment if you have any questions. I'll try to answer them. I'm not like an expert on Cinema 4D, but I'll, you know, do what I can to the best of my ability. So, thank you for watching, and I hope you all have a great day.